Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you my birth story. So if you guys are interested in today's video, please keep on watching. I do already have a labor vlog up for you guys. If you guys haven't watched that yet, I'll leave it linked above for you guys. That's more of the video footage of us being in the hospital, but we don't go into too much depth in that video, or at least I feel like we didn't. So if you guys want to watch that first, you can, or if you just want to listen to me talk about it, you sure can just stay and watch this video. So we're going to go ahead and take it back to January 28th. Um, that is the day my water actually broke. Um, my water actually broke at home. I was 38 weeks, about to be 39 weeks in a day. So I was, we had just gone home from having dinner. Me and Eric went out to Texas Roadhouse. When we came home, I literally took a few pictures that I wanted to take and I sat on the couch and my water broke. I do have video footage in the last video where he's moving like crazy in my stomach and I was like, something's going on. And then some leaking started and I was like, did I pee myself? I was like, I'm sure I didn't pee myself. But something in me was like, I think my water broke. And sure enough, my water did break. It broke at 9.30 uh, p.m. on Saturday, the 28th of January. We did wait at home. Um, I didn't go to the hospital right away. I actually didn't go to the hospital till 12 uh, midnight and got to the hospital at 1 in the morning. So I waited a few hours before because I was like, I, if it is breaking, let's see what my body does at home by itself. I was having no contractions yet. Um, it broke at 9.30 by 12. I want to say that I started having some, my, like, very little bleeding. So I was like, for sure, my water one did break. So I was like, I guess it's time to go. So we started getting ready to leave. We left my house at 12.30, got to the hospital at 1 in the morning. Um, they took me into, like, the triage room. And sure enough, my water did break. And, I mean, everything just moved so fast from there. I want to say I had the easiest pregnancy. Um, I was very blessed with my baby. He was, he treated me really good while I was pregnant. I never once had to go to the hospital for anything. And when we were there, it was just kind of surreal to actually be there. And they did say like, oh, well, we'll check you to see if you were water break because most times your water doesn't break and you just peed yourself. But sure enough, my water did break and it was kind of surreal to be there. Um, when I told Eric, I think my water is breaking, he was playing his game. I think he was playing like the Nintendo and he was like, do I have time to finish this game? <laughs> Which was funny at the time because we were kind of like, did it break, did it not? But it's just crazy to look back because when we were having dinner, I told Eric, this is going to be probably our last dinner, just the two of us. And sure enough, I did not know we were going to be in the hospital that night it could have been because I was so full like we ate a lot but it was crazy to actually experience my water breaking at home it wasn't like a big gush ever it was literally just like leaking like little by little um by the time I got to the hospital I was bleeding a lot more I was starting to have minor cramps or contractions but it was looking back now it's like it's crazy how it all happened once they confirmed my water did break, the nurse that was going to be taking care of me did come and introduce herself. She said, we're getting your room ready and pretty much unhooked me from everything that was connected to in the um, triage room and walked us over to the room where I was supposed to be delivering in. And we did kind of talk about not a really a birth plan, but like what I had envisioned as a birth plan. Um, I had told them I wanted... Pretty much my main focus was to go without pain meds um, the longest that I could. So I told her I did not want the epidural if I didn't have to get it. I did tell her that if it got too intense, I did want IV meds. And um, she suggested to start with like aromatherapy in the room to kind of just zen out the room and just kind of relax and kind of see how it went. So we did that. Um, she brought in lavender and the lights were off I mean it was one in the morning when I got there so we must have been in that room like around two in the morning um they did check me I believe to see how we were gonna get everything progressing I went in with like a finger finger shut finger open I'm not sure I was pretty much not dilated yet which I wasn't surprised because I had just had a doctor's appointment and my OB told me the same thing so 
I knew I wasn't going to be too much dilated, but because my water broke, we were hoping everything was going to move pretty fast. And they started to, uh, they started me on pills to help me dilate. This pill was going to work for four hours. So she said, we're going to give you this pill. We'll let you rest. And then in four hours from now, we'll see if there's any progress. So I took one around two in the morning and they were going to give me another one to see how far I dilated. After the four hours, I pretty much didn't dilate much, so they gave me another pill. And this was all oral. It was self-dissolving on the side of my cheek. And at this time, I'm pretty sure these pills somehow make your contractions start because I was feeling some contractions. They weren't intense, but they were starting. I took a total of three of these oral pills because I was not dilating much. After that, she said, let's see what the doctor wants to do. At this time, they had an on-call doctor. He never saw me. Um, everything that was going on was through the RN nurses, nothing from an actual doctor. So um, it was this was Sunday morning, and after three of those oral pills, I didn't dilate. So then they said that they were going to do something different. Sorry for the interruption, we do have a special guest here that joined us. But like I mentioned, um, they did introduce Cervidale, which was a pill that was going to help dilate the cervix. Um, they said that I think it was supposed to stay in there for a few hours. The first one did not work very well. I think it only stayed in for like about an hour and then it came out. So I was assuming that it came out because I was dilating but I think it was just inserted incorrectly. So then about an hour after it came out, they reinserted it and we were hoping that I would be more dilated come the second time. I only opened to about a two in 12 hours, I wanna say, which it was some progress, but it wasn't enough progress to where we wanted to be. So pretty much all Sunday, we were just trying to get my cervix to dilate and hoping for the best. After 24 hours, I only dilated to the two. So I never dilated more than that in those first 24 hours. And keep in mind, guys, my water did break at 9.30 Saturday. So you run risks of infections when your water breaks um, and labor doesn't really get started. So they did have me on um, IV antibiotics at this time just to avoid any risk of infections. Um, the baby was doing great, so there was no concern for him. Um, I was hooked up to the monitors. I was obviously having contractions. Um, baby was doing fine. My contractions got pretty intense, I wanna say. Those first 24 hours, I was going through it. I mean, most people have the baby by then, they didn't put me on Pitocin until um, after the 24 hours. So I feel like I was just being very, uh, what's the word? I was being really stubborn about the plan that I wanted. So at like 22 hours, I want to say, I asked for IV pain meds. And I think the first dose was fentanyl, which was um, an IV pain medication that I was introduced. The medication really didn't help with the pain itself. I feel like it more just made me feel like kind of like high in a way. Like you're just not all there mentally. But like I was still feeling the contraction. So I feel like that was not very much helpful to me. And as far as that medication, I was trying to not take as much because they said the more you use it, the less effective it becomes. So I, my goal was to kind of use that IV medication once I got closer to dilation wise because I was only at a two at that time. And they did tell me that I would only be able to use the fentanyl until one hour before we pushed. So if I was wanting to use it, I could only use it I think every like one every hour or so, like one dose every hour or so, like something like that and I couldn't have it one hour prior to me pushing. So I was really trying to not use the medication if I didn't have to and it just got very intense. So I labored pretty much all Sunday and come Monday morning, it was like three in the morning. I had not slept at all. I was very tired. 
I was only at a two and I kind of didn't see myself getting anywhere and I gave in and I asked for the epidural. I was really trying to go without the epidural because of back pain I already suffer and I assumed they would only get worse with time if I got the epidural but I was just in a lot of pain. I had already, I was just physically tired, mentally I was checked out and I just wanted just to relax a little bit. I asked my nurse, um, I will say my nurse was great, they never once pushed it on me. I knew it was an option if I needed it but it was never something that was constantly being offered. Actually it was never offered once I said that it was not something I wanted uh, and my nurse tried to see if I can get the epidural and I think it was like two or three in the morning and the anesthesiologist knew that I really didn't want it so he suggested me to try to get another injection of fentanyl or through the IV and see if that would help and that was a plan that's what we were like okay let's try that and before they give you the epidural they want to make sure you're hydrated so they give you like IV fluids so I think that's what she was going to go grab um, just in case and then she was going to bring the fentanyl because that's what we had agreed that we were going to do when she came back in the room she said we're not doing that she's like we're just going to give you the epidural the anesthesiologist is going to come into the room she's like you haven't rested you haven't slept in 24 hours you're only at a two you've been at a two for 24 hours at this point I think your body just needs to rest and I mean, I was kind of scary because everything kind of, we had already had a plan and then everything was just going to change once again. And Eric was a great support because he never once pushed anything on me. He pretty much said, whatever you want is what we're going to have, which I feel like I really needed that because I didn't want somebody to push me to have something that I didn't want. I just, me, myself, it had to come from me and I feel like that's exactly what happened. So once the anesthesiologist came into the room, he pretty much prepped me and Eric was by my side when I got the epidural. It was kind of scary because just everything, it's a lot. There was a lot of needles involved. There was a lot going on. So once I got the epidural, I mean, everything kind of just relaxes, which is the whole point. Um, I'm not sure if this is common, but I went completely numb to the point that I could not feel anything. Um, one of the nurses mentioned that you're technically supposed to still have some movement, but I had nothing whatsoever. Like my whole body just, well, like waist down, I was like completely numb. I mean, thankfully I stopped feeling the contractions because they were getting very intense. But everything just stopped and from there on, I was able to get some rest. I did sleep, um, I think after like an hour, like 20 minutes, 30 minutes after I got it. I was able to sleep and I pretty much slept from like 2 in the morning to like 6 in the morning which was phenomenal because I had not slept at all. So when I woke up they checked to see if I was dilating and I was at a 7. So I feel like my body indeed needed to rest. It was a lot I think for me. A lot of strain going on. So when I heard that I was at a 7 I was like oh the baby's going to come in time now. We were now at Monday morning and I was like, he's going to be here by like noon. That's what my calculations were. So I once again fell back asleep after they checked me and my doctor came. This was my OB. She came in at around 11 to check me. And by the time she came in, she did an, a pelvic exam and she said that I was at a 6. So... I was technically going back down right because I was at a seven and now I'm at a six so it was kind of I was like well maybe every nurse measures differently I was like maybe I was at a six or maybe I don't know I was just thinking best case scenario they just measured wrong and I am still dilating so the doctor said well we're gonna let you just see what happens and we're gonna come and check you again around two and that's where we left it at during that time, my nurse did um, help me get into like a peanut ball and just doing some exercises even though I had the um, epidural to kind of see if we can get um, 
myself to dilate a little bit more. We were alternating on the peanut ball, so I was moving um, from side to side every bit, about every 30 minutes. I was changing sides. They had to help me because, like I said, I was completely numb. Like, I had no way of moving at all. 2 p.m. came and my doctor came in to do another exam. And at this time, she stated that I was not dialing any further. I was still out of six. And she mentioned that um, I was going to go and have a C-section. It was the first time that I was told about the C-section. So I feel like I was... Like not, I was not comprehending a lot of the stuff that was going on because it was just not, never an option. And then you're throwing it at me now. I understood where they were coming from as far as infection goes because of how far I was and I wasn't dilating. We were cutting it. I think at this point we were at about 38 hours in labor, which is a long time. So I understand where they were coming from, but... I just wanted to see what my body could do. I just didn't believe that I was not going to have my thought of my labor, how it was going to go. So the doctor leaves with the intention of going to prep to have a C-section. I was crying. Eric was emotional as well. And the nurse asked me, she's like, how do you feel about this? And I told her, I was like, I do not want to have this done. I want to see what my body can do. And she advocated for me very well and she said, you know, you you can't ask for that. If you need if you want more time, ask for more time. And I did. She went to go talk to my doctor and the doctor gave me another three hours. She said that she would check me again by five and see where I was at around five o'clock. So I continued to labor. At this time, um, I was already on Pitocin, so I should have been dilating more. But I wasn't and by this time also the epidural was kind of wearing off which was one of the reasons why the anesthesiologist had mentioned for me to not have it done when I did because he said you'll probably need it more for pushing than you think you need it now and he really wanted me to just get the IV meds to not get it done so early right because in their eyes I wasn't dilating even though I had already been in labor for so long. And by the time that she checked me at two, it was wearing off. I was starting to feel contractions again and I was starting to get uncomfortable. So it was a little scary because I was like, okay, so I'm starting to have pain again. But I just wanted to see what my body was going to do. And while we waited for it to become five o'clock, like I was just as scared as... I was at the beginning because the doctor did mention, you know, it could be that you're not dilating because you're going to have a big baby. She said he was, that she was starting to feel a cone head when she was checking. So I was like, what am I putting him through just because I'm being stubborn? And she did say, you know, like, there's a lot of things that can happen in labor, like broken collarbones and stuff like that if he doesn't fit. So during that time... In my mind, I was like, if it has to be done through a C-section, it has to be done. And we waited till 5 o'clock. And I was scared and I was also hopeful. And I said, you know, whatever happens, happens for a reason. Ideally, that wasn't the birth plan that I wanted to when I got to the hospital. But it is my first birth and I didn't want to put him at risk. Or myself just because I was being so hard-headed about what my ideal birth plan was. Five o'clock came by and my doctor came in around 5.20. Uh, my nurse was currently delivering in another room so another nurse came in and when she checked me she said you're still at a six and she had the nurse that was there um, check me as well just she said just so she can confirm that that's what it was at. And the nurse said that I was about a six, six and a half. So that was pretty much it. Like I didn't dilate like more. The C-section was going to happen. I still cried. I was emotional. I was scared. And they pretty much said we're going to prep the OR and you're going to have a C-section, you know. But at the same time, we knew with me having the C-section meant that we were so close to having him in our arms and... It was all going to be over pretty soon, so sure enough, um, 
the doctor left. She said she was gonna go get ready for surgery. And my nurse came and she pretty much just talked to me and told me what to expect because we never talked about C-section. We never talked about recovery. We never talked about what was gonna happen. So it was all very new and very different. So they gave Eric scrubs and it was time to go. The anesthesiologist came in, gave me some uh, meds to begin getting me numbed again. Because at that point, like I said, I, the pain meds that they had already given me, they, they had already worn off. So they wheeled me into the overall room. Eric had to stay outside. Um, to me, it seemed like forever, but it must have not been that long. He waited outside. Um, they had me in the room. The shakes was horrible. I had... I didn't get the shakes with the epidural the first time, but when I was in the oral room, and it wasn't even that cold in there, it was just, I think my body just reacting. I've never had anything done to that point where my body had so much medication in it. So I was shaking uncontrollably, and once they let Eric come in the room, like I just remember telling him like the shakes are normal. <laughs> Okay. Can I touch you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excited, baby? He's almost here. Yeah, okay. The shakes are normal. Shakes are normal? Yeah. From the medication. Medication? Yeah. Like. That's what they told me because he was kind of like, can I touch you? Like, are you okay? And Eric came in the room and I think they had already opened me, like my stomach up. Um, I remember just like smelling the like burning flesh kind of thing. It wasn't painful, but you do feel a lot of pressure where they're doing the C-section. And I just remember Eric coming in, him sitting down. And I think within like 30 seconds, they were like, baby's head is out and it was just it was really fast and I was just glad that he was okay the nurse said dad do you want to see the baby and then Eric stood up and I think he was able to see I don't think they, he saw when he came out but he he saw when the baby was like out already and I think that was it's it's a happy feeling but it's also so sad as far as the mom's perspective because I did not get to see him coming out or experiencing any of that like you normally do in a labor just because of how they do everything with the c-section and I feel like I did kind of miss out on that um, Eric was able to cut the umbilical cord and once he was out of me Eric was with him the whole time um, they did bring him over to me uh, just so I can meet him and Eric was able to hold him for a little bit and then they had to take him to get like cleaned up and all that stuff and Eric was with him the whole time. To me, I was pretty much getting stitched up. It took forever, I felt, um, to get stitched up. I think I was in there for like 10 minutes. Um, after the surgery, um, they did take me to a recovery room which was right outside of the OR and I was there for about an hour. Um, they brought the baby to me, I think like 15 minutes after um, I was in that room and in that room they're pretty much checking um, for blood clots and stuff like that they don't talk about how painful this stuff is I mean I'm sure it's really painful when you have a vaginal birth and then they're pressing on your stomach and stuff but imagine having a c-section like you're sore and it is painful it's you're feeling stuff it's not like you're completely numbed so they're pressing on your stomach to try to get like all this blood out of you and it's uncomfortable um, I was able to breastfeed the baby for the first time in that room I just remember like I was so shaky um, it's such a out-of-body experience which is kind of sad because looking back it's like everything happened so fast from the moment that we actually got into the OR to everything else I feel like your, your body does not process it the same and I was able to breastfeed and Eric, I remember Eric was, I was starving first of all because I could not eat after I got the epidural. Eric didn't want to eat because I couldn't eat, um, but I was like, you need to eat, like, 
the baby needs one of us to be mentally sane, you know? So Eric was able to go get food. I was with the baby and it's just, it was a surreal moment being with my son at that time and just taking it all in. And we were in that room when we told our family that little guy was here. Everybody was super anxious because um, I did labor for a total of like 41 hours, I think. So everybody was like, what's going on? Like, what's taking so long? I think everybody knew something was wrong. Um, we weren't really keeping everybody up to date because I didn't want to freak anybody out. So we were just not updating them. And when he was born, we told him, you know, like, he was born... He was born via c-section and i did have a nine pound seven ounce baby so he was a big baby i feel like if we would have known that maybe we would have opted in for the c-section a lot sooner um but they were estimating him at about eight pounds at birth so i was like oh i can do eight pounds you know not that i've ever given birth but i just assumed that i could after about an hour they did transfer me to um pretty much the room that i was going to be in um to recover and in there it was kind of intense because it was just a lot of surveillance for me and for the baby because i did have a c-section they had like some monitors on my legs to help with um, blood clots so i wouldn't get any because i couldn't move right away um, they did tell me that after like in three hours they said they're like in about three hours we're gonna take you on your first walk and just little things like that and i will say Recovering from a c-section was a lot on me. It I pushed myself a lot because I knew I had to um, I remember walking the hospital after the three hours after giving birth and oh boy, I could barely even walk I Remember the pain I was in and I just remember like I have to do this, you know like I have to force myself to do this to recover sooner and luckily I had Eric there and he was a trooper because it wasn't him just watching over our son now it was him watching over me and our son because i could not move much so he had to pretty much do it all he was helping having to help me change like i could not bend to get my underwear on um he was having to change the baby's diapers and it was hard for me to get in and out of the bed um i i would do it it would just take me about two minutes to be able to get out of the bed I've seen many people get c-sections and they move like nothing and I don't know how they do that because it was not that simple for me um I remember just even just trying to pee was it was intense so I can only imagine how much worse it is when it's a vaginal birth when you're trying to pee and get all of that stuff because it's, it's not easy and luckily I made it out and we're here <laughs> six weeks later but looking back it's it's a lot and your body tr plays a really good trick on making you forget all of that when you do get your baby it's crazy because everybody says oh once you have the baby like everything like you forget about everything and it's true it happens but don't let it trick you because you still went through all of that after i did walk i was like okay when can i eat because i am starving um, they did say that I really couldn't have a lot of food because um, I had just had the surgery and they needed me to like kind of eat slow So I was able to drink water, but the same thing they told me that they wanted me to drink water little by little They didn't want me using straws I think the first thing that I ate was like jello and crackers and it was it was probably like the best meal I've ever had because I was starving and um, I think after about an hour uh, one of my nurses said that I can have like a ham sandwich. It was literally just mayo, ham, and bread. It was the driest thing I ever ate, but it took me forever to eat it because I, even just eating was so uncomfortable. So finally I was able to eat. Finally I was able to kind of start trying to feel what somewhat normal. I was in the hospital for a total of six days. They kept me a little longer after the c-section because my heart rate was kind of getting elevated um i think when i did have him they said my heart rate got to like 160 which typically your heart rate runs anywhere from like 74 to like 80s as a normal adult and mine normally runs high but they were just concerned 
and they were doing a lot of testing on me to make sure that everything was okay before they just let me go home so it kind of was unfortunate that we were in the hospital for so long because I just wanted to be home um, being in the hospital it's a lot of work especially as first-time parents it was just me and Eric and the baby would cry sometimes and we didn't know what was going on I couldn't help much like I said it would take me a while to get out of the bed so like I couldn't really rock him out of the bed or stuff like that so it was a little tough and I feel like you get judged no matter what because the nurses would come in like if he wasn't quiet down by a certain time like we knew one of the nurses was going to walk in and kind of see if we needed help or what was going on but once we got home we were able to get and get in a routine and I think we got this we got this now I think it took a little longer because we were in the hospital for so long so you build a routine there and then you come home and then you need to build another routine you know so luckily by now we kind of have more of a schedule and kind of know how to read him and he kind of understands what we're doing to help him versus when he's a newborn baby he doesn't know us we don't know him we're trying to figure it all out but yeah this is my birth story and it's crazy to look back at and just reminisce what happened and how everything is because it's been six weeks now baby is a month and two weeks he did get his first set of shots yesterday and you know we're just trying to do the thing and just trying to go back to reality and slowly but surely we're gonna get there but if you guys did enjoy today's video don't forget to like comment and subscribe let me know if you guys had a similar story to mine or how was your birthing experience i'll see you guys all in my next video